Hey, this is Dr. K from IA Medical School, and welcome to our discussion about strep throat. Make sure to check out our website, imedicalschool.org, for all your medical school needs. One of the most common complaints in a primary care doctor's office is a sore throat. We call this symptom pharyngitis. There are many causes for pharyngitis, with infectious causes being of greatest concern. Infectious causes can range from viral to bacterial infections. One of the most important infectious causes of pharyngitis to identify is group A streptococcus. The reason it is important to identify the cause of pharyngitis is proper treatment can reduce the risk of acute rheumatic fever, which we will talk about later. Despite the fact that viruses are the most common cause of pharyngitis, 60% of patients receive antibiotics for a sore throat. A better understanding of the causes of pharyngitis will help prevent antibiotic overuse and appropriately treat patients who are at risk for acute rheumatic fever. Though we will not discuss them today, it's important to have a broad differential when evaluating pharyngitis. Besides group A strep, other causes include HIV, influenza, infectious mononucleosis or mono, HSV, Neisseria gonorrhea, chlamydophila pneumoniae, and even tularemia. The most common non-infectious cause of pharyngitis are allergies. Group A streptococcus is one of the most important infectious causes of pharyngitis to identify because if not treated, group A strep can lead to acute rheumatic fever. Up to 15% of patients who present with pharyngitis come back positive for group A strep on throat cultures. To help us identify patients with group A strep, we look for a set of signs and symptoms that together are called the Centaur criteria. The Centaur criteria consists of whether the following are present, tonsillar exudates, tender anterior cervical adenopathy, fever, and absence of cough. Those who meet 0 to 2 criteria are unlikely to have group A strep pharyngitis. For patients who have 3 or more criteria, these patients should undergo rapid antigen detection tests. If the rapid antigen detection test is negative, they are unlikely to have group A strep as these rapid tests have a high negative predictive value. For patients with higher risk for severe infections, such as those with diabetes or who are immunocompromised, or even those taking chronic steroids, a throat culture may be obtained in addition to a rapid antigen test on the first visit. It is important to help identify severe forms of group A strep pharyngitis as complications can result. The complications of group A strep include peritonsillar or retropharyngeal abscesses. Now that we have diagnosed a patient with group A strep pharyngitis, what is the treatment? The purpose of treating group A strep pharyngitis is to help reduce symptoms. Complications such as abscesses, transmission to close contacts, and the risk of acute rheumatic fever. The treatment of group A pharyngitis is antibiotics, and when started within the first two days of symptoms, have the greatest effect in reducing symptoms. The antibiotic of choice for the treatment of group A strep is oral penicillin V, with therapy lasting for 10 days. Cephalosporins can be used for treatment of group A strep, but they should not be used as first-line therapy. Cephalosporins like cefuroxime, ceftonir, and ceftriaxone can be used if a patient has a mild beta-lactam hypersensitivity, as there's only 5% cross-reaction between beta-lactams and cephalosporins. For patients with a significant penicillin allergy, consider treating with macrolides like clarithromycin, azithromycin, or erythromycin. An important point is that after having a group A strep infection, 5-10% to 10 of patients can develop a post-strep glomerulonephritis that is characterized by microscopic hematuria, proteinuria, edema, and acute renal failure. Remember, treatment of group A strep only decreases the risk of acute rheumatic fever and not post-group A strep glomerulonephritis. Now that we have talked about group A pharyngitis, why is it so important to identify and treat group A strep pharyngitis? Well, as we mentioned before, group A strep pharyngitis, if untreated, can lead to acute rheumatic fever. Rheumatic fever is seen in patients with a previous group A streptococcal infection. The presence of a group A strep infection must be demonstrated by a rapid strep test, throat culture, or anti-streptolysin O antibodies. Anti-streptolysin O antibody is an antibody produced by the body against an exotoxin produced by most strains of group A strep, 
and indicates a previous group A strep infection. Rheumatic fever is diagnosed based on certain criteria. There are major criteria and minor criteria. For the diagnosis of acute rheumatic fever, a patient must meet two major criteria or one major and two minor criteria. An easy way to remember these criteria is by the mnemonic jones calf p Jones represents the ma major criteria. J stands for joint involvement and describes the migratory arthritis that affects the large joints of the body. O represents the heart and indicates carditis and valvulitis, which is essentially inflammation in the heart. N represents subcutaneous nodules. These nodules generally occur over bony prominences. E represents erythema marginatum. Erythema marginatum is a circular ringed rash that appears and disappears for months on the trunk of patients. S represents Sydenham chorea. Chorea is the development of uncontrolled jerking movements that makes the patient appear as if they are dancing. The minor criteria is represented by calf P. C stands for CRP elevation. This also includes an elevation in the ESR or in the white blood cell count. A stands for arthralgias. F stands for fever, and P stands for a prolonged PR interval on an EKG. Acute rheumatic fever is diagnosed when there's evidence of a group A strep infection and the patient meets the criteria for diagnosis. The treatment of acute rheumatic fever is antibiotic therapy, followed by heart failure management and anti-inflammatory therapy. In terms of antibiotics, penicillin V is recommended just as if the patient had group A strep pharyngitis, but there should not need to be active pharyngitis to warrant treatment. Family members and others in the same household should be cultured to make sure they do not have evidence of group A strep. If they are positive for group A strep, they will need antibiotic therapy. Remember, these patients can develop carditis and valvulitis, so they may develop cardiac symptoms such as heart failure, or valvular abnormalities. The cardiac inflammation should be treated with aspirin, and the valvular disorder should be medically managed. In addition, aspirin has a dual role in acute rheumatic fever. In acute rheumatic fever, aspirin can help reduce the inflammation in the heart, and also it helps reduce the inflammatory processes in the joints as well. Well, that was a brief review of strep throat and acute rheumatic fever. I hope you liked this video. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a like. Make sure to share this video with your friends and classmates. If you have any questions or comments, place them down below. And most importantly, subscribe. This is Dr. K from IM Medical School, and I'll see you next time.